like your outfit. Why, thank you. Yours as well. Classy cash? Yes. I'm into it. I, I am a classy, casual man. This, these are the adjectives? Okay, well, it's good <laughs> to see you in person. Last time it was over Zoom. It was the heat of the pandemic. So, yeah, yeah it's nice It's nice to be here. Lovely yeah. studio you got here. I nice. Know. Thank you. It's, it's nice. It's nice. All right, so your book, your book is now available in paperback. That yes. means you're doing all right when it makes it there. So Does it? I know nothing. Yes, <laughs> it does. So where did the title come from? Um... The title, I just kind of like the title. I like the word book being in the title, just yeah. so people knew what it was. I thought that was <laughs> important. Is there a confused? I'm not someone who usually, you don't associate <laughs> me with books, so I thought really rooting it in book would uh, be helpful. Um, <laughs> it kind of goes through my life, and it focuses a lot on my high school and teenage years, so I thought uh, your book was a good title. There's a chapter called Your Book. I kind of viewed it like an album, and sometimes in albums, they name uh, the album after one of the songs, and I kind of yeah. did that with one of the chapters. And I'll never be cool enough to make an album, so my nerdy <laughs> book of stories will be uh, my version of it. But, uh, yeah, I, mostly because I just like the title. <laughs> so you really go back to the beginning in the book, right? You, I, do. I didn't realize this. You were doing stand-up at 12? Yes. I started uh, stand-up comedy when I was 12 years old. Who There's does me. That? I do, uh, I guess. <laughs> I was... Uh, I don't know why. I just kind of liked it. Did you see something? Or My like... parents were big comedy fans. I'm okay. from Canada where, like, comedy is actually, like, appreciated and acclaimed. And some of Canada's biggest celebrities are, are comedians. Yeah. And and so um, we really revere uh, can uh, comedians in Canada. So I think it's a... It's like a more aspirational job. So yeah, I, I started doing stand-up comedy when I was uh, 12 years old. My first show was in a lesbian bar. Um, yeah. It was called The Lotus, and uh, its Lotus. Uh, banner had a very explicit <laughs> lotus flower uh, <laughs> symbol on it. Um, and uh, yeah, and the lesbians loved me. It went over huge. They uh, they were very encouraging. Was, that your, first, <laughs> yeah. was that your first one? Yeah, that was my first ever show. Um, Did you plan that? Were you like, I'm going to I was like, I got to get in front of some bar. lesbians. Yeah. If they, they, uh, uh, no, that was just a happy, happy, happy coincidence. I, guess. I love that. Um, yeah, and then from there, I became. Um, uh, I, I actually got hired to be a comedy writer for a moyle who wanted jokes for his act. And if you're not a Jewish person, uh, a moyle is the person who performs uh, circumcisions. Um, and so I was approached. And he needed jokes. He wanted jokes. He thought it would. I don't know why. He thought it would be. I think because it's a tense environment. You Hell break yeah, the I bet. Ice, <laughs> and you don't want to be riffing. I guess when you're there. <laughs> so you want to know you're loaded up with 10 to 15 great jokes written to you by a written by a, a stone 14 year old. And so um, he hired me, yeah, he saw me do stand up comedy and he hired me to write uh, jokes for his Moyle uh, routine, I guess, as it were. Do you remember one? I do remember some of them. Uh, it's funny, they kind of seem in bad taste now, I guess, by. Uh, so I was, can't wait. There was some about. And again, it was icebreakers. It was like, oh, he'll be the only kid in like preschool to say he survived a knife fight or something like that was one. Uh, there was like a little, like a little off the top. You just want to let I mean, there was stuff like that. Um, and then what's funny is my mom was at a wedding recently and she sat next to a guy and he turns to her and he says, I'm the Moyle that your son wrote jokes for and I still use the jokes. Are you serious? <laughs> no, yes, I'm serious. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, so if you're uh, getting circumcised in Vancouver uh, anytime soon, <laughs> those are jokes I wrote when I was 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I was almost, yeah, I was barely out of getting circumcised myself. That was <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're so young. Yeah. Um, well, moving on to your 20s, because this has been fun, your teen years. Exactly. Wait, I, <laughs> so, I, I really mature a lot throughout this time. So. There so you go. Wait, speaking, I love that this isn't you as a teenager. This is you in your 20s. Well, this is when so, I moved down on my own. Is, yeah. Okay, is it true that your apartment in Knocked Up was inspired by your actual apartment? Yeah, so they were trying to dress the apartment we all lived in in Knocked Up, and in the movie, it's like six guys who lived together in a disgusting disaster and they kept like struggling to dress it right and to make it look real and so Judd Apatow the director sent uh, like a, a like the the production designer with the camera to my house to take pictures and this was my actual bedroom when I was like 23 years old and we were making Knocked Up like while we were shooting Knocked Up this is how I lived. And, I love that yeah. he was like bold enough to be like your place is probably perfect. Oh, he had been there. He's like, you live in filth. Let them go to your house. Take pictures of that. It's disgusting where you live. And I was like, it is pretty disgusting where I live. I found that couch in an alleyway. Like, uh, that's the futon I grew up in. And I changed those sheets 
I don't even know if I change those sheets. Every once in a while, I would maybe just like put another sheet over it and like close. I think the concept of changing, I didn't even know you had to change sheets, I think. And then um, my very forgiving wife, I started dating around this time and she was like, you got to change your sheets, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want me in them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. She, I remember one, one day she just, she was like, yeah, it, it was, she told me to clean up or she was leaving. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we've been going through the years of Seth's life. So in your 20s, you also met your wife, Lauren. So how'd y'all meet? Uh, we met um, through a friend at a birthday party, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, we started dating on our very first date. We got in a terrible car crash, actually. Someone hit our the car we were in. Um, I was driving and uh, it was bonding. It was like we survived a little uh, action wow. movie together. Yeah. Um, uh, like a bad one? Uh, my car was completely trashed. Yeah, we were on the freeway, and a 16-year-old who had taken his uh, dad's car um, uh, clipped the back of my car, and we spun out uh, across the entire freeway and uh, wound up uh, wow. facing the opposite direction. Uh, we were going like 60 miles an hour. Uh, it was yeah, it was insane. We we're lucky to have survived. Um, and so yeah, it was like a very bonding experience early on. Um, she's a writer and director, and uh, a brilliant woman. And uh, I'm so very I'm lucky to curious. be with her. Yeah. So y'all are so cute. Yeah. So just curious. That's a, yeah. It's a long time ago. I mean, if your <laughs> that's car's, us now, still if, together. If y'all, if you're, y'all are so cute. So wait, how did you get home if it's total? Did y'all like? Her friend came and picked us up. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. It was, it was very nice, but yeah. So then you got to meet a friend, you got right in there in the I got right in there, date. I hugged her, I yeah. phoned her after, because texting didn't exist yet. Yeah, <laughs> you called a human? I called a human, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and then we, we started dating, and it was a beautiful, uh, a beautiful thing. Um, one of, uh, I don't know if I should tell this story. I'll just tell it, and you can cut it if you want. This story's gross. So on one of our uh, earliest first dates, uh, I had just gotten back from uh, Mexico, where I don't know if you've been, but they tell you don't drink the water and don't oh, eat washed Montezuma's fruits revenge. and vegetables. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. ate a lot of salad when I was there. Don't ask me why. And I came back and we had one of our first sleepovers at my place. Oh uh, no. And uh, I was gonna walk her to her car. And I lived in like a second story walk up and, I, and she lived and she parked like a block away from me. And, uh, and I got dressed and I was ready to walk her out. And I was like, re literally remember like looking at myself in the mirror and she was like getting her keys and she's like ready to go. And I was like, Seth, like my first ever long-term girlfriend I'd ever had. I was in my own apartment. She was there, we just slept over. I was like, this could be the beginning of a beautiful thing. And then I <laughs> my pants horribly. <laughs> like as bad as you fathomably could. And then I heard a knock on the door and she's like, ready, let's go. <laughs> and I was like, I think I really love this woman. I can't, I can't let her know. She parked one block away. I have to walk one entire block having just myself. Oh. <laughs> and, and I put my arm around her and I walked her down the stairs and thank she God. She didn't notice? It was a breezy day in LA, thank God. <laughs> and I walked her to her car and I, 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 I hugged her goodbye. <laughs> and I remember her driving away. And you don't wanna walk after you yourself. <laughs> Let me be clear. You want to freeze in place, remove everything. If you can, like you've been in a chemical spill. You don't want to, you don't want to move. And then you have know. It go I, had, I had made a, a journey, you know, and I remember standing there on the street, just waving at her being like, there goes the love of my life. I have, I think I have to burn these shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did you tell her that story? When I wrote the book. So uh, a lot of you, uh, <laughs> around 15 years later. It yeah. took a minute. <laughs> it, it took 15 years for me to be like, so... she won't break up with me if I tell her this. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to your 30s. No, let's not move on. Let's, let's talk about do that. It. No, you got to travel a bit in your 30s. So here you are at the Great, this is on the Great Wall of China. That's amazing. Yes. I, I've always wanted to do that. I've never done that. So who are these guys? So a funny thing happened while I was at the Great Wall of China. Um, I don't know, has anyone here been to the Great Wall of China? Raise nope. your hand. So it, it's... It, you were on an island. <laughs> I guess, well, so you'll take my word for it here. I, uh, you go out there, I was there promoting this movie, The Green Hornet, and the yep. guy in The Green Hornet, this guy Jay Chow, is like a, a pop star. He's like the, the Taiwanese Justin Timberlake. And so we went all around um, Asia uh, because he was very famous in Asia, and um, so we got to do press all over. And they sent us to uh, Beijing, and me and my wife were like, "Let's go to the Great Wall of China." And it was uh, January, so it was really cold, and it's in the mountains, the Great Wall of China. So we go up there, and 
there's literally nobody there as far as the eye can see in any direction except a Chinese lady with like a cooler selling beer. And that's it. That's all you need. And that's all, yeah. And so we're, we're just like, this is so surreal and weird. And then over the hill comes this group of like what I can only describe as dudes. Like, and they <laughs> were these three dudes who were from Boston, I think. And they rec they see me and recognize me. And this like moment that they have where like, you can see they, all, they were there as tourists. They're on the Great Wall of China. And, and the only person other than them who's there is me. And <laughs> they genuinely, like, lost their minds. Like, they, they had a hard time, tr like, processing what happened. Well, it's out of context. It was yeah. very out of context. I was confused why I was there. I can only imagine <laughs> that they wouldn't be. And so anyway, we all bought some beers from that lady, and we drank them together and hung out for a little while and took some <laughs> pictures. And, uh, and I hadn't heard from these guys. Obviously, I hadn't heard anything about these guys in years. Then one of them tagged me in this picture on Instagram a few weeks ago, and I just saw it and it popped up and I was like, oh yeah, those random men I met on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> It's a yeah. random ass story. It is, but we'll always we'll always have each other. <laughs> in 2015, you played a real person in a movie for the first time. So you yeah. were, yeah, you were Steve uh, Wozniak. So I was. what? So what was that like meeting him? It was cool. I, yeah, I got to hang out with the, Steve Wozniak for uh, those. I didn't. He he essentially invented computers. Um, he invented uh, like the microchips that were able to produce like uh, personal computers as we know it. So yeah. without Steve Wozniak, like computers would be the size of, you know, like this room essentially. And he's yeah. the guy who made them something a person could own on their own. And not only that, he's the person who conceived it's of incredible. the idea that every person might want to have their own computer one day. Yeah. Um, what and a visionary. So, Is that, did that, did, was that intimidating to play him? It was until I, I, and then you meet him and he's such a funny, silly guy. And I, I actually went to the Magic Castle with him. And I don't know oh. if anyone's been in the Magic Castle, but it's wild. And 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 the magicians love him. A magician, you know, if you're a magician, Steve Wozniak's a big deal. Like, like uh, that's a real cross section of interest, I would say. Um, <laughs> Because magicians spend a lot of time alone. I'm just going to say. <laughs> um, uh, and, and so, <laughs> um, so, and it's funny because you're like, what's he going to be like? And 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 he's a genius um, and and a little eccentric in some ways. So at the end of the night, what's funny is. We're walking him out, him and his lovely wife, and we're going to the parking lot of the Magic Castle, and I go to the valet, and I'm like, uh, it's dark out, you know, and I valet, I, I hand them the ticket, and I'm like, did you guys drive here? And they're like, oh, we actually took segways here. Um, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Segways, that's funny. And I was like, I bet you guys were pretty early on the Segway bandwagon, I would imagine. And he's like, what's actually amazing is if we have the first two Segways ever, like serial numbers one and two. And he's like, do you want to see them? And I'm like, obviously. And so he walks me and my wife down to like a dark corner of the parking lot where just leaned up against like a shed are two Segways. And what? him and his wife get on the segways and 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 he's like what's funny about these though is because they're the first generation they don't have lights yet so i was like how are you going to get home we're on hollywood Bowl. like what are you going to do and he's like we're staying a few blocks away and they literally pulled two flashlights out of his pocket and i'm like you're just going to segue home holding one flashlight with one hand and the segway with the other and he's like yeah we do this all the time and him and his wife just hopped on the segways and zipped off down the road like literally holding and if you drove past them you'd be like oh there's two crazy people but in in reality, he that was the man who invented computers. computers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really, really oh my gosh. Yeah. That's Steve a Wozniak. random thing. It's very random, yeah. It so was they weren't weird. far, I take it then, because yeah, that had they to They were staying at the W when we were at the Magic Cat. That's about oh. 20 minutes. Say, I don't know how fast segways go. <laughs> Not that fast, I don't think. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, looking to the future years, um, you've been open about not wanting kids. So is this yes. still a thing? Okay, I, I, you I still said do. Hard, I yes. still don't want kids, yeah. <laughs> uh, why? Why? Like, you just never saw yourself as down, you just like your time. It doesn't seem that fun. <laughs> I can see how it seems that way. <laughs> yeah, it really does not. It doesn't seem fun. And most of my friends who are parents, God bless them, spend a lot of their time talking about how much they don't like having kids. <laughs> uh, and what me and my wife spend a lot of time talking about is how much fun stuff we can do because we don't have kids. I think that that's actually yeah. pretty rad, though, because yeah. I, I never I never wanted kids like whenever yeah. before I met my ex, and then he had kids, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. I was like, and I got to kind of experience that, yeah, it. Yeah, that seems like so, a good version of it. So maybe, then yeah. I ended up having kids because I, yeah. and then they're so I would I wouldn't say it's like 
the most fun job because no. it's like overwhelming, yeah. but it's a beautiful thing and it's like nothing cooler <laughs> for me. But I will say though, I think it's important because people always used to pressure me about it, yeah. about marriage and about having kids. And like, it's like not everybody, that's not everybody's dream is to no. do that. And yeah. a lot of people, I, I just think, think it's important you say that. Yeah, a lot of people have kids and they don't even think about it. I know, but they Oh my God, we call those kids. people yeah. that have accessories. Yeah, and, yeah, or they just think that's the next thing you do in life. I know, kids. that's what And then they look back and they were like, I didn't have to have kids. No, my, yeah. my friend was like, that's a person who has a kid as an accessory. And I'm like, that's yeah. not, that's a lot of therapy in the waiting. Um, but anyway. Yeah. But you don't need kids. There's so many kids. I know, and that's the thing too, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> who looks at all the kids out there and thinks, I wish there were more kids. <laughs> I guess anybody that wants kids. Yeah, not but me. I think that's cool. And your wife is the same way, right? She does Lauren's not want same. kids. No. Yeah. We get a lot of, I don't know, I know pe people describe having kids, yeah, as like brief glimmering moments of beauty amongst a sea of pain. <laughs> it, it kind of, whereas not having kids is just, it's just lovely all the time. And there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's none of that. It's just great all day. I'm never like, I wish I had kids and I'm yeah. missing something by not having them. I'm more am doing stuff all the time where I look over at my wife and she looks at me and we're like, if we had kids, we couldn't do this. Yeah. This wouldn't even remotely be on the table. No, that's why- We couldn't why do any of this stuff if we had kids. People with kids, that's yeah. what we call me time. So oh, yeah. we have to carve it out. All yeah. the time is me. Why would I, who, why would I, why <laughs> wouldn't it be me time? Who, what? No, I it's think, us time, but me and my, we do it together. We I think that's, together. I think yeah. that's really awesome. And I think it's so cool yeah. to not pressure people and enjoy no, I your think life. There should be yeah. more voices of the, that you Reason. don't need to have kids. Yeah, you don't need to have kids. Also, like, won't the world not be here in 30 years? So. <laughs> Are we all going to die? Anyway? Oh, my God. Well, I do love my children. They seem great. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> they seem lovely. I'll call you for babies. Exactly. <laughs> you and your wife would love it. We okay. Yeah, we hang out. I love I love my friends' children. Probably no, more is, than they do, it seems. It some is, of the time. <laughs> You get to play with them hand yeah. in the back. It's, the best. it's like a grandparent exactly. or an aunt or an uncle. Yeah. 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 Exactly.